All right, guys, how's it going? It is Wednesday, the 14th of December, 2022, and you're watching Cop Talk TV. Shout out to those of you that have uh, supported Let's Make Cop Talk TV great again. Your name should be in the video description below. If it's not, please do let me know. My eyes are very red today. I don't know why. I suppose it's early. Didn't sleep very well last night. Mm. Certainly not from crying. Anyway, not today. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but uh, talking of crying and emotions and things like that, I just wanted to do a very quick video just to give, give a little nod, actually, to uh, Gerard Ullier, uh, who died uh, two years ago today. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of time uh, for Jed, and uh, I really do believe that he was massively influential in turning Liverpool Football Club around again. Uh, you know, in particular with his improvements at Melwood, you know, the training facilities at the time. Um, and just, you know, he, he reminded me, and I'm sure some of you guys, uh, what it was like to win again. Um, because in two, 2001 was uh, was an outstanding uh, period as a Liverpool supporter that season, you know, uh, with the things that he won. Uh, and Liverpool, which, you know, I was when I was a young lad growing up, you know, we won and we won and we won and, and FA Cup finals and League Cup finals, which were big deals back then. They're not now, unfortunately. Um, you know, they were like, you know, you would expect to be in them each year, really, as a Liverpool fan and hopefully winning them and stuff like that, you know. But, you know, we were there or thereabouts always. But then we went through this period of fucking nothing. Uh, and my recollection of Gerard Ullier is, you know, uh, just just making me remember what it was like to, to win silverware again. Uh, he had an, in, an incredible impact on the club, extremely underrated uh, with how where Liverpool Football Club is today, for example. Um, and I've got to be honest, he's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life and certainly in relation to football and Liverpool Football Club. Uh, you know, bizarrely, you know, he did come in and, and become joint manager with Roy Evans, who is arguably, probably, I think, the nicest guy I've ever met to do with Liverpool Football Club. Gerard Ullier, same sort of uh, man, if you like. You know, they're just really, really good guys. But unfortunately, they were put, you know, alongside each other in the joint management uh, position in 1998, which is around the time I started Cop Talk and it, it the website. And it was it was just at the time, it was like, it just showed how, how fucked up Liverpool Football Club was at the time to even have joint managers. Liverpool Football Club, for goodness sake, you know, top flight of English football, one of the greatest, most famous clubs in the world, with a joint manager because it didn't have, um, the, you know, the bottle, if you like, to push Roy Evans out at the time. And... I always felt it was quite. Uh, I always felt it was quite disrespectful to Roy Evans, and um, I think if Roy Evans had been given the backing that Gerard got afterwards, which Gerard Ullier would complain that he didn't get as much backing as a club of Liverpool's size and stature should have done at the time, I think Roy Evans would have gone on and uh, and, and been more successful. Roy Evans was an amazing man. Uh, anyway, so but this is about uh, Gerard Ullier, who is certainly an amazing man. And, um, you know, I remember being in the players' lounge one time at Liverpool, which some of you, you know, will know. It's a very sacred place. You know, the manager shouldn't be in there. Out. But he was outside in the corridors. And I remember taking Charlotte there, my daughter. She would have been, what, six? Five? I don't know. How old would she have been? Five years old, six years old, something like that. And, you know, I remember Jed stood there with a cup of tea in, 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 in the corridor to the players' lounge. I was in the players' lounge. Can't tell you how, why I was in there. One day I will. Uh, and uh, and Jed, Jed, Jed was stood there with this really, like, just like a real small like cup like that. Like, you know, let the English people have tea. I mean, Gerard Ullier is obviously French. We don't like the French at the moment uh, because of the World Cup. Uh, but we don't like him anyway. Um, <clears throat> but I remember him stood there with his, with his cup of tea and biscuit. Do you know what I mean? And I remember him putting it to a side so he could talk to Charlotte, you know, and as any dad or parent would know, like, you know, to me, I was already like, oh, fucking nice, Gerard, do you, man? You know, how cool is that? You know, and there's my, little, my, my daughter's like that, you know, she, she she was meeting Michael Owen that day. And, um, and, 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 just the way that I remember Jed, like, I know, he, like, you won't understand, but just the way he had his cup of tea and he, and, he, and he put it to his side with his biscuit and he was like, I think he might even have passed it to someone, I don't know. And then he had to bend over and he was, I don't know how fucking tall he was. Does he tell me on here? But, you know, he, he seemed, in comparison to my little daughter, and he, was, he, he bent over, you know, and he was like, 
who are you then? You know, and he was talking to my daughter and he made time for her. And it was just for me as a dad was just, I'd never forget things like that, ever. And that just shows you what a good man he is, was. And, um, yeah, I have, like, you know, some of you might have seen my Melwood Raw videos on here over the years, long, long, long time ago. Uh, what else should we crack a drink out and start singing? Um, and to me, a Liverpool, Liverpool players, managers, anyone, right, if they haven't got time for the fans, they are dead to me. I can't stand them. And there are always times when, you know, when there's... When there's a pile on, you know, they've got to move through, they've got to get, I get that. But there are many times, you know, I always know who they are, you know, as to which ones bother with people and don't. But then if there's a TV camera there, I thought, oh, they'll soon start stopping then, right? Certain ones over the years. I think we've got a good crowd at Liverpool now, to be honest, from what I hear. And um, some, some, you know, some people can be in the game, where they can be your heroes and can be exceptionally rude and selfish. But Jed, you know, I remember, I'll never forget that day. He was mint. And um, I think I had some other dealings with him in, in, in Ireland. It's irrelevant. I can't remember. It's a long, long time ago. We say, hey, what did I say a long time ago? 20, 20 odd years, isn't it? Something like that. I don't know. I don't even know what day of the week it is, to be honest with you guys. But I just saw that it was his anniversary. And I, I just wanted to give him a little nod, really. Um, because I just think that he was such a good man. And you know them little stories when he was in hospital with the heart problems and Tomo, you know, snuck a little like wireless radio in, you know, so he could listen to the Liverpool games and that in his in his room when he was supposed to be resting. I don't know, it's just I don't know. Have you got any nice Gerard Ullier members uh, memories? And um, you know, I, I, I remember his you know his red scarf, very plain, very simple. Great man, great man, uh, exceptional scouting. Like, well, I wouldn't say scouting in terms of players. Uh, and I will I'll, let's remove the word scouting, but he had an outstanding football network around Europe and the world. He was highly, highly rated. Uh, and you know, we've had some good managers at Liverpool, including Jurgen Klopp. That had they been given proper backing, we would have seen a lot more. I think uh, he was, of course, ordered the the OBE. Um, I can't remember what year that was, 2003, which is, uh, you know, Officer of the Order of the British Empire. And you look back at 2001, some of the trophies that he won, you know, with Liverpool, FA Cup, Football League Cup twice, Charity Shield 2001 as well. You know, I, I, I value the Charity Shield community. Nobody does today, but I do. And tell you what, if you've never been to a, a Liverpool game and you get tickets for one, I can assure you, you fucking value it then. Runner-up 2002, UEFA Super Cup 2001, UEFA, uh, UEFA Cup 2001. And I could go on forever. UEFA Team of the Year 2001, European Coach of the Year 2001, World Soccer Magazine World Manager of the Year 2001, Onze uh, Mondial Coach of the Year 2001, Premier League Manager of the Month, three of those around that period, or certainly during his time at Liverpool. Um, you know, just incredible. And obviously he had success at Lyon as well and the France under-18s. Uh, PSG uh, won the Division 1 with them in 85-86. And, um, you know, I think he made some uh, some horrendous signings uh, when you think of people, um, certain players, you know. But when you look at them, I'm looking at the names here. Uh, critics blamed Ullier's unsuccessful summer signings in 2002. So you've got Elagi Juf, Salif Diaw, for goodness sake, Bruno Sheru. Um, and obviously the Nicholas and El Colo move was... Uh, not made permanent when he was he would have been outstanding for us incredible but i have a bit of intel on why that didn't happen some of you will know why that didn't happen and it was it was more to do with his brothers and, and nicholas and elka and he's off the field off the pitch stuff but i think nicholas and elka really enjoyed liverpool and i th and i don't think he was uh you know um he wasn't you know like nicholas and, elka and his brothers had bad reputation Okay, but Liverpool, I think him and his brothers really liked the city and, and wanted to behave themselves and all that. Uh, and I'm not saying, and I also don't think it was just Gerard Ullier that made that decision. I think you've got to look at Rick Parry as well. But anyway, that's by the back. So um, it says here, he signed that, you know, you've got to remember the likes of the players he did sign, you know, uh, Sam Ayupia, Didier Amman, Stefan Henshaws, one of the most underrated players and defenders we ever had, Smeecher, Westerveld, Titi Kamara, Titi, Titi, Titi. Eric Meyer and Treora. 
Uh, and also, you know, you had the youth players here look, that, that he brought through into, you know, in, in, and made a cornerstone of the team. Uh, Carragher, Owen, Gerrard. Yeah, and it says here, Liverpool's training facilities at Melwood were thoroughly overhauled. And I can't explain to you how much uh, he contributed to that. Uh, other players, Marcus Babel, uh, Nick Bambi, uh, Gary McAllister, Igor Biscan. Uh, you know, he, he, he signed some great players, but he did have some duds, but doesn't every manager. Um, but he, you know, he, he, I think that his hands were tied quite a bit. But this doesn't really matter. This doesn't really matter because it doesn't deny the fact that he was a very good coach, manager, a very, very nice man. Uh, and when there was, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but he made reference to some flowers being sent to his wife once uh, after some you know, obscenities had been sprayed on the Melwood, uh, I think it was Melwood uh, wall at the time, you know, to do him get out of the club sort of thing, you know, very, very nasty. You know, was a Liverpool fan really, but that's, you know, anyway. Uh, and uh, Gerard said in a press conference, you know, that how grateful he was to the fans for the support and that someone had even sent flowers to his wife. That was me. It was me on behalf of the website, Cop Talk. You know, we were like, it must be difficult for you as well, you know, and not just Jed kind of thing. And, um, you know, it was just a nice gesture. There was no, we, I don't even think we put it on the website. The members would have known about it because we'll have done it together collectively. But we didn't put a big thing on, you know, like you'd see these tossers doing today to try and get a bit of attention. I don't know, it was genuine. And um, I don't know, I just really liked Gerard earlier. I was very grateful to what he did to Liverpool Football Club and he made me remember what it was like to win again and um, 2001 on, you know, on a personal level for me it was them finals were just fucking amazing and um, it was a good good time to be a Liverpool fan and I feel like that we've, we've had that under Jurgen Klopp as well um, and Roy Hodgson <laughs> and Brendan Rodgers. No, I just think that under under Jurgen, um, you know, I just think they're elite managers. You know, like class, and um, I'm sure many people, you know, younger people, if you like, younger fans under Jurgen have thought, oh, this is good, this winning like. Uh, well, that's what it was like when uh, when Gerard Ullier was at Liverpool, and you know, he, he was he, he took over at a time when you know he changed the boot room and all that. He didn't want the old guard, the old Liverpool players, constantly, you know. The old guard, the old Liverpool, the legends, if you like, from the 60s and that, used to walk the corridors at Anfield like they owned the place and they did have a right to, to have that attitude, you know. Uh, but Gerard Ullier saw it as, you know, yes, you acknowledge your history and you look up to that, but you can become those people. And if they're constantly coming in to the changing rooms or, you know, walking around like they own the place, he thought it could be a bit, like I wouldn't say disrespectful, but off-putting. You know, and maybe undermining as well. You know, like, and you've only got to, if you don't know anything about it, if you Google um, Ian St. John, another legend, Ian St. John used to work for me on the website. I, he used to do a column for me on the website. Um, you know, back in the day, as did many others, but, he, you know, Ian St. is, is not someone I have a problem with, um, but he fucking hated Gerard Houllier, you know, and he would call him the Frenchman. He wouldn't call him by his name. Google it. Uh, you know, because Gerard Houllier was seen to be disrespectful to the old guard, but he wasn't. He was just trying to modernise the, the, the club, as Rafa would say. And uh, I'm not sure if you could get away today, con you know, being a former player, continue referring to, you know, if you were referring to Jurgen Klopp as the German all the time, you know, because, you know, you didn't like him. He's like, yeah, the German... The German and you know, so it was, it was, it wasn't a very nice time for us back then. I think that people were as wet back then, you know, and were as soft back then. So we were just like, well, he just don't like him, does he? You know, but uh, when you think about it, really, it wasn't it wasn't very nice, was it? You know, um, and it, it, yeah, Ian St. John wasn't the only one that had a problem with it. But again, they were the the other people I can think of. Uh, at that time we played in the 60s and would have played with Ian St John and stuff like that so just different generations really and they didn't like being pushed out um, and maybe psychologically from a mental point of view maybe when you're a a great you know uh, of the of the club and you retired and maybe maybe they felt 
I don't want to use such like I don't want to start sounding like some sort of woke fucking idiot, but maybe they felt warm or at home when you know the likes of Ian St John and Tommy Smith and all that. Maybe when they walked the corridors and popped down, maybe they still felt inclusive and part of it uh, and felt that they were being pushed out. I can relate to it in a little way with my late father, my dad. He was a police inspector. You know, he served in the police for thirty three years, uh, as did his father. Uh, and you're thinking, well, why didn't you do it then? Well, my dad told me not to do it. He was like, you don't want to be in this job, son. It's terrible. It's not like it used to be, like old school Bobby and that. You know, it's all paperwork and that now. So he kind of like pushed me away from that. I think I'd have quite liked that career, to be honest with you. But then I would have done cop talk, wouldn't I? So, and I'd have had to work for a living. Um, so yeah, no. When I was a kid growing up, I wanted, I did want to be a policeman. But my dad came out a little bit earlier than he wanted. He said, "Don't, don't, don't do it, son. It's shit." So, and I believe him when you look at the coppers today, they're not really looked after, are they? Like they used to be. Anyway, that's by the by. But uh, I remember my dad coming out after thirty three years, coming out of the police force after thirty three years, and uh, I think he missed the day to day uh, comradeship. Comradeship, what's it called? You know what I mean, don't you? Like just that, maybe that banter and being with your colleagues and things and uh, I think it greatly affected him I mean my, my dad took his own life uh, as well uh, on the 6th of December uh, in 1993 which I didn't you know obviously that cropped up recently but I didn't mention it because I don't like all that attention and shake but uh, yeah anyway so what I'm saying is I just think that maybe the old school still felt a part of something and I remember Tommy Smith saying to me at the time that, you know, they had the former Liverpool Players Association and it wasn't acknowledged by the club. It was like they felt pushed out and they didn't feel in a good place. They didn't feel that the club looked after them. They didn't feel that the club cared about them anymore. Um, and so maybe just walking them corridors, popping into the changing room and saying hello to the players, maybe that was a part of the... Uh, thing I mean I can think of Tag some of you guys will know Tag he's a Cop Talk member a great friend of mine uh, Tag2056 on Twitter very well connected if you've got Twitter you should follow him uh, very passionate as well he doesn't like the owners or the Tories uh, but Tag is a, an outstanding um, man um, that was um, employed at Liverpool Football Club when Gerard Houllier was there. I know he's got pictures with the trophies in that year. Uh, it'd be good to speak to him, actually, and say, you know, see what he thought of uh, Gerard Houllier. And also, he would have specific uh, knowledge of what the old guard would like because he would be involved with all of those people I'm talking about uh, at Anfield. So Tag is someone that you should follow on Twitter. He's um, a very, very, very nice man. Do you remember the AA advert years ago? He's a very nice man. He's a very, very, very nice man. No, Google it, YouTube it. Um, I'm waffling a bit, but it just, it just, you know, there was that that bad vibe uh, towards Gerard Uli initially, but I don't think he gave a fuck. He got on with it, and uh, and he delivered. He delivered. He delivered silverware, and uh, the only bit that I didn't like was the. Uh, the way that Roy Evans, you know, but that was, you know, Roy Evans is a great man. And um, can you remember Tommy? It's big enough if you got It's making weird noises. I think I'm hungry. Did it again. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I'll have you know, uh, I'm still losing weight. I, I did lose a lot of weight, you know, as you know. You can still call me a fat cunt, it doesn't matter. It's water off a duck's ass to me. But uh, I, uh, I did lose all that weight until the pandemic and then I put about three stone back on, but I'm going back down in the right direction again. And I got weird today and I'm at my lowest for a long time. So, um, yeah, I'm sure some of you uh, are really interested in that. All right, and I just wanted to give a nod to Jed. I miss him. I like him. And uh, uh, I do. I'll never never forget how nice he was to uh, to me, and but especially, more importantly, to my daughter. And uh, he was a lovely man. He turned Liverpool Football Club round. He modernised Liverpool Football Club. Um, and I really do think, you know, when people talk about Shankly and what he did and how he modernised the club and how he turned attitudes around and things like that, uh, I think Gerard Houllier played a massive part in that and is grossly underrated, uh, probably by the younger fans today who, you know, fair enough, probably don't know that much about him. I don't know. I, sometimes, I, I, you know, I don't think, you know, like when I mentioned when I started the website or... 
you know, years ago, I'll sometimes see someone in the comment go, I was two years old then, or I just, you don't know, do you? So time is a weird thing. As you get older, uh, you don't realize, oh, fucking I'm punching myself in the face. You don't realize, you know, some of you guys watching this, I would love you to tell me in the comments, uh, you know, like your first memories of Liverpool Football Club or when you first started watching Liverpool Football Club or do you know what I mean? Because my first memories really is going back to like 85, 86 around there. My first Liverpool game was the FA Cup final against Everton uh, that we won uh, in 86. So I don't know. Sometimes you, you when I interact with you guys, I just see a username. I don't know, you know how old you are sometimes. Some of you I do. If you come to the streams on a on a weekend, Saturday night, and that this Saturday from 6 o'clock in the UK time, we're going to have a few sherbets and that, get in the Christmas uh, Christmas mode. So, yeah, let me know. But um, Gerard Udi, a great man. I suppose it, it's when you look back at, you know, former managers, you know, like my first manager, if you like, was Kenny Dalglish, player manager. So I know we have great managers before... Uh, Kenny Douglas, you know, I obviously know all of them, but I wouldn't be able to relate to those people because I didn't see success or failure or whatever under them under them managers. Does that make sense? So, uh, you know, I'm sure there's older people than me who go, oh, he was a great manager, Dunk, as well. But so I've never really been interested in history. You know, when, when I was growing up to do with Liverpool, I was never really interested in what we'd done before. I was only interested in the present and what we might do next. But I found that as you get older, your, your interests change a little bit. So I could probably be a bit nerdy and go back in time and see, you know. Um, yeah, I think it was certainly a happier time to uh, to follow football, I think, back then. Um, I think it's got worse over the years with the commercialisation and everything. But anyway, uh, Gerard Uli, rest in peace. And uh, I want to keep his memory going. And... Uh, I can't remember the last time I, I, I made a video like this, trying to remember someone. So I think that should tell you how much, uh, I, how much respect I uh, have for Jared Julian.